What's up, Foundation? What's up, YouTube? It's me, your big partner, Cartoon One, the village storyteller. Man, I'm back again, man. Listen, I'm going to make this quick. I'm going to get directly into it um, because I'm going to give you a little something at the end that I want everybody to pay attention to. You know, pay attention to what I tell you at the end. Pay attention. Uh, anyway, this is a story, as you can tell from the title, of when I lost a homie. When I lost a homie. Okay. Uh... It's Saturday night. Homie called me, had been calling me on the phone all day. Cub, what's going on, man? What's happening, man? You going to the party tonight? I'm like, man, homie, of course I'm going to the party. And at the time he was calling me, I was in the process of ironing my khaki suit. Um, I had to have, you know what I'm saying? I had to have them razor sharp creases in it. You know what I'm saying? I had just I had just purchased me uh, a brand new pair of croaker sacks from... um. Western surplus and you know, I just had to have me something to wear. You know what I'm saying? I was going to this party G'd up. It was in the hood It was over one of the homies house right in the middle of 53rd and Avalon between Avalon and McKinley um, We threw a lot of parties there back in the day, you know, that was our street You know what I'm saying that street right there was the beginning and the end for us It didn't go no further. It didn't start no sooner than 53rd Street, you know so anyway, the party was going to jump. The party, we had been anticipating this party for like two weeks. The homegirl giving the party, she usually give a good party. Well, matter of fact, no, she always give a good party <clears throat> until one of the homies get too drunk or some of the homies get too drunk and go to doing something stupid, go to fighting, acting like fool. And, um, you know, party over. We ain't finna tear the homegirl house up. But she understood um, all that day, uh, homies had been, homies had been trying to figure out what they was going to wear. Now, of course, this was a, this was a simple house party, but now you could call it simple now. But back then, you know, a house party was not just a simple house party. It was the place to be. It was the thing to do. It was where we wanted to be. You know what I'm saying? That's where it was go. That's where hood stars was made. Hood legends was made. You know what I'm saying? Um, everybody was going to be there. If you if you weren't there, you were going to be a square, especially if you were from the set. You know, of course, that was within the set. Now, of course, you know, back then, other sets that we got along with, if they so chose to pull up and kick it, rub elbows with the 53rd Street gang, it was okay. Anyway, so um, after I uh, I got dressed, I didn't put my khaki suit on at the time. It was too early in the day. I wasn't finna mess it up. I just threw on some uh, sweatpants and a, and a sweatshirt, you know what I'm saying, and some Chuck Taylors real quick. Just go kicking the hood up at the park. So I get to the park, everybody up there, you know what I'm saying, kicking it, you know, talking about it, doing what we do. You know, saying some homies, you know, doing, you know, preparing or, you know, talking about later on that night, doing their due diligence on the things that they were supposed to do, uh, especially if they wanted to rise up in the ranks of the 53rd Street gang. Anyway, so uh, me and my homeboy Bean, we were talking. Now, Bean was a new homeboy. He was young. Um. And matter of fact, at the time, Bean wasn't nothing but 17. No, Bean was 16. He was 16. He'd been from the set a couple of years by, at this time. And um, he was a young rider. Man, you know he was a young rider. Uh, his older sister was from the set. And she would always tell us, man, you know, y'all look out for my little brother. You know, she didn't, she didn't really want him to be a part of the gang scene. She didn't want him to have nothing to do with that. But, of course, they whole family from the set. How was he not going to be from the set, you know? So anyway, but she would always tell us, man, look out for my little brother. Look out for my little brother. Little brother named Bean. Uh, his older brother was the homie Big Bean. And so, you know, of course, he was going to pick up the mantle and become Lil Bean. And that's what he had did. You know what I'm saying? I would check him out a lot of times, you know. Uh, we'd be in the park. He had come out. He'd bust out his pocket with a can of spray paint and wanted, you know what I'm saying, and like, you know, always wanted my approval because he knew 
uh, that I was the grandmaster of striking back then. You know, I make a I make a can of spray paint talk, and I don't let me get one in each hand. I was bad, man. I was the ghetto Picasso when it come to that spray paint can. You know, especially hitting up that Fifty Third Street gang. Boy, look, I was good with it. Anyway, um, we were up there, man. We were up there about twelve deep. And we was talking about homies that was, you know, preparing to, you know, be released from prison. Um, homies that's um, on their way back to prison. Uh, who who shot who? Who got along with who? Who's trying to get along with who? And so on and so forth. All the type of talk that go on in the hood. Especially, you know, a little horseplay here and there. You know, homies just out here really kicking it on this Saturday, bright and sunny, in this California weather. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people ain't experienced that California weather, but man, it's oh so fun, you know. We the sunshine state for real. So um, I remember a car pulled up. Um, uh, it was a '63 Lowrider, but it belonged to one of the homegirls. You know what I'm saying? She had her car, and it was re it was nice. It was nice. You know what I'm saying? Could no homies, could no homies uh beat her beat her hopping. But so she she wore that like a badge of honor. So when she pulled up, she was like, what's up, cut? What's going on? So, you know, she, it was her and three more homegirls in the car. They was four deep. What they was up to, nobody knows, you know. Uh, probably some nefarious activities on going to enemies and tricking them like it's all good and setting them up. Because they would do that, man. You got them homegirls that set you up quick. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, I've seen to where they got a dude in the car. And drove him around and then had the nerve to bring him on 51st. Knowing what was going to happen to the young fella. If we didn't pounce quick enough, it was because we didn't realize he was in the car. Or if we, if we did realize it, nobody had got around to like hit him up. Which that was rare because a new face. It was going to be hit up immediately. Where you from, homie? You know what I'm saying? Cause what what's that you from, homie? Off the rip. That's how it went. And so, you know, they knew that if they brought him over there, either he was going to punk the game or say where he was from. Now, if he said where he was from and it was and it was not conducive to that AGC program, he was going to be well tuned. You know what I'm saying? He was going to get him a what you call a tune up. We was going to check his temperature. We was going to see if we could run his motor hot. And nine times out of ten, we did. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, <clears throat> she she was kicking. They had the homegirls in the back. They was clowning. You know what I'm saying? I'll never forget. Uh, one of the homies had a water balloon. He ran up on the car. Boosh! He hit the homegirl in the back seat with the water balloon. Boy, she wanted to get out and fight. The homie took off running through the park. She wasn't going to catch him. Man, she called the man. She called the homie all type of name. But he, I mean, he was dying laughing. Man, they was soaking wet on that back seat. But now the home girl who car belonged to, now she the one that was hot, man. She called the homie all type of punk SOBs and this, that, and the other, wetting her seat up, uh, messing up her upholstery, which he, he really did, though. Wasn't no thing, no, man. Um, it was getting, at, by this time, it was getting, it was getting darker. It was getting dark. It was getting dark. So people, talk, you know, started leaving. Well, cause look, I'm finna go to the house. <clears throat> I'm finna go get dressed, homie. Come back later. I'll be back up here. I'll be back up here in about an hour. You know what I'm saying? So everybody was skirting out. Everybody was skirting out, leaving, going they certain ways. So um, I remember I asked the little homie Bean. I'm like, cuz, you know, what's up? You know, uh, what you finna do? He's like, I'm finna go home, homie. I'm finna get me something to eat, OG. I'm like, okay, cuz, you know what? You going to the party? He like, yeah, I'm going to the party, man. I'm coming. I'm like, all right. So, you know, the little homie, he leave. So me, like I said, I jumped in the hoopty. I got on. I was out of there. Got to the house, man. I never forget, man. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. You know what I'm saying? Um, like I said back then, y'all drank that eight ball. Man, I'm sipping on that eight ball. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get on geek. You know what I'm saying? Back in the day, we used to call it getting on geek, getting drunk. Man, we'd put that straw in that tall can. We just, you know, drink. We'd drink that uh, that eight ball with a straw. <clears throat> Shoot it straight to the dome. You know what I'm saying? So boom. Man, I'm sipping around. I'm, I'm, I'm getting my clothes ready. Sipping on this A ball. Man, I put them, man, I put them khakis on, man. They was hitting just right with the small cuff at the bottom. You know, man, I got I got the black pair of brand new crocus sacks on 
fresh dressed like a million bucks. You know what I'm saying? Got the crispy, crispy blue uh, long sleeve T-shirt up under there uh, with the khaki shirt on. Had the Lokes. I had on a pair of Lokes, you know what I'm saying, that I brought home from prison with me. Now, of course, you know, people who've been to the pen and Kelly, y'all know we, when we get them Lokes, we get them essays to engrave them. You know what I'm saying? I, I seen the first pair I ever seen was jumping. Man, the essay would engrave, you know, would write it. Right? Whatever you wrote them, and they would take the white out and, and smear the white out on it and then wipe it all clear. And the only thing would be left was whatever they scratched in, whatever they wrote. So, you know, they black. And you got the white out, so your set showing up. Some people get the whole, you know, whatever they want to get on the eyes or just wrote across there. So I had on, then, you know, you get it wrote down the side or whatever. It's cool. I brought my Lokes home with me. My Lokes had uh, had Avalon Crip on them. You know what I'm saying? Had a five on one side, had the word spelled out, F-I-V-E, -F -I and had a tray on the other side, T-R-A-Y, you know? Those was my Lokes. <laughs> Loved them too damn. Loved them. So anyway, man, I had I had on I had on the lokes. Man, I had to I had the three long braids, homie. Some you know what I'm saying? When I'm feeling myself, I got the three, I got the one braid here, one braid here, and I got the long C braid come down the front. You know what I'm saying? With the blue rubber bands, with the blue rubber bands on the tip. I was G'd up that day, have have my brownies on with the set, with the set wrote on them with the white out, you know. Oh, it was on like Maggie Stone this day, man. You know, we had it look, a, a house party back then was a fashion show. You know, it was a set, a hood fashion show for back then. Everybody wasn't, wasn't, you know, we was not into the Gucci, the Louis, the Fila, all them old weird, funny names. Of course, that junk was out then, but it was a certain type of people that wore that type of stuff. Real life, stomp down, set stars. We wasn't putting that junk on, man. You know what I'm saying? We, it, it just wasn't our skilo, it wasn't our style. <clears throat> The clothes we wore didn't come out of uh, the Fox Hill Mall or the Beverly Center. No, the clothes we wore came out Bell Surplus across the street from Manuel Arts, uh, Western Surplus over there in the gangster hood. Or we would shoot out to Southgate to Greenspan's and showing up, get the OG get out. They had everything. Greenspan's still around today, yo. So anyway, we get to the party, man. Homies pulling up. They got the music bumping. It's jumping. Um, i never forget at the time... When I first pull up, she playing that uh that Mo Bounce by Z I mean by Zap. Yeah. Boom, boom, boom. It's jumping, you know what I'm saying? House speakers bumping, got one big house speaker on the porch, two, three big house speakers inside the house. So it was jumping, you know, homie standing around the, on this side of the street, on that side of the street. So we greet him, so you know you all come, what's up, homie? Woo, 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 woo. So uh I I seen the home girl, you know what I'm saying? I seen Bean's uh older sister. So I bail over there because it's her, a couple of homies, and some more homegirls. So I'm like, Cub, what's up, y'all? What y'all doing? What's jumping? What's jumping? So everything was jumping. So uh, I asked the homegirl. I haven't asked the homegirl. I'm like, uh, where, uh, where your little brother at? She was like, I don't know. I know he's going to be up here. But now I told him don't come. I didn't want him around. I don't, I don't, I don't like when he be coming to these house parties. Anything could happen. Woo, woo, woo. So I told the homegirl. I said, listen, you can't keep baby. You can't keep babysitting that boy. Man, you know, he... He, he, he grown, he's 16. He gonna do what he gonna do. You know what I'm saying? When you was 16, you was banging the turf. So, you know, boo, boo, boo. She said, yeah, but it's different when he's when he your little brother and he, you, you don't want to see nothing happen to him. You know, we just lost two homies a couple of weeks ago and some crazy stuff over there at the park. I'm like, I understand that, I know. I said, but I'm telling you, nothing gonna happen to the homie. You know, cool, cool, cool. So we party, we partying all, we partying, homie. It's going down. Homies coming and going, you know what I'm saying? Had one or two little old fist fights. And, you know, it was it was the norm. You know, homies get drunk on a trip. You know, my thing was I was I didn't like, I didn't want to happen was if another set that we got along with came to the party and the homies were the tripping on them. Now you now we finna go into another war that we really, you know, we really don't need, really don't want. And so at this time, you know, back then, you know, Avalon's we weren't with the Crip on Crip Violence, so I liked it. I wanted to keep it that way. Um, I never forget, man. It was about, I say it was about 10 o'clock, about 10 or 10.30 it hit. I had walked out the house and went into the backyard. Homies was back there in the backyard drinking, talking, and it was a dice game going. 
So with the dice game, I'm like, okay, shoot. You know what I'm saying? I ain't never been, I ain't never been no heck of a dice guy. You know, I, dice ain't never really been my thing. Dice ain't never been my thing. Um, if I did get in the dice game, I'd get in there and shoot for dollars. You know, a lot of times you have a big old giant dice game and homies ain't doing nothing but shooting dollars. You know, but it was fun. I've seen some, I've seen many fights over them one or two little dollars too, y'all. So, uh, it's going on, you know, homies going and coming. I proceeded to leave me and two more homies. We like, cause we be back. We walking toward the front of the house and we standing around. It's, uh, I never forget the party was going, uh, and everybody happened to be on this side of the street in front of the party. Now it was, it was a few people on this side, some down the street, up on, up on the corner, up on Avalon. And so it was a few homies at the other end of the block, at the other corner, down there, what they, on McKinley, what they was doing, I don't know. But you know, like I say, we was up and down the street all night. Cool. Um, when I say, when I say it's about 30, 40 people standing in front of her house, it, then it was people on the porch. Then, if, you know, like I say, the house was full. The music was jumping. It was, you know, it's in the hood. All the homies there, all the homegirls there. It ain't no room for everybody to fit the house. Okay, so now... Nobody seen the car hit the corner. Nobody seen it. If they did, they didn't pay attention to it. And uh, they probably thought it was some homies. But now the car hit the corner and the lights were off. Nobody found this out till later on afterwards and we started talking about it. So when the car came down the street, as it got in front of the party... It was in the house right by the alley on 53rd. As the car got directly in front of the house, it started shooting. Uh, gunfire, it was a, it had to be an automatic weapon because you can't shoot the way it was, the way the shots were coming from a regular pistol. Because it was coming. Blah, 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 blah. And they was getting off. They were shooting out both sides of the car. So any homies that was on the other side of the street that wanted to try to return fire... They were suppressing that with that gunfire. But the, but the main gunfire was coming out the uh, passenger side window of the back seat of the back seat car. And it was spitting. I mean, everybody hollering. Everybody hit the dirt. Everybody was falling. Get down, get down. People running left. People running right. People diving. A lot of people going for their guns, trying to figure out, you know, trying to maneuver where they can get a shot off. And that's when the car really stopped shooting when homies started returning fire. Boom, 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 boom. I never, I was on the ground and I, I remember the car driving off, but I remember the back window shattering. But the car was gone. Now, if somebody got hit in that car, I don't know. But the car, boom, hit the corner. It hit McKinley and kept going. All right. As soon as it got, look, the, mu the music was cut off in the house immediately. Everybody, you know, homegirls making noise. You know how women squeal. And people coming out. So uh, off the bat, we we knew two homies that was hit. One was hitting the shoulder. He was standing around cussing because he was mad. And another homie was hit in the side, but it skinned him. It cut his skin, but it skinned him. That's what we seen right there. So everybody getting up, looking around like, dang, cuz, who was that, man? Who was that? Who was that? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Of course, we couldn't place it. We don't know. Um... As everybody was getting up, moving around, as everybody was getting up, moving around, there was one person was still on the ground. So now when people went to looking, one of the homies went over there and like, get up, cuz they gone, get up. He wasn't getting up. When the homie rolled him over in his shoulder, he had a hole in the side of his head and blood was leaking out. And the homie hollered, oh, cuz, oh, cuz, man, the homie, the homie hit, the homie hit. People running out the house, they running over to look. I heard a loud scream. <laughs> and the scream came from my homegirl that I was talking to earlier. Her name is Tish. The scream came from my homegirl, Tish. And when she ran through the crowd, moving people out the way, I seen who it was on the ground. 
It was her little brother, my little homeboy, Bean. Bean had been shot in the head. And she fell to the ground and she was cradling his head and his whole body in her arms and she was rocking. And she was crying her heart out. No, man, no, no. And she was holding him rocking. His arms was just lifeless laying there. And the more she rocked with him, the more blood came out of his head and some yellow stuff. And I just shook my head, man. And she looked up, she looked up at me. And she was like, my brother, too, my brother, my brother. I didn't know what to say. I didn't, I, there's nothing I could say. In fact, I was in somewhat of a shock. And she rocked him on the ground right there. And her little brother that she didn't want have nothing to do with gangs. She didn't want him to live that life. Laid there and died in her arms at 16. The little homie was gone. Now listen, Foundation. I just told you a story. The story was not true. No name that I just used in that story was true. That is a preview of what I'm fixing to do. Now, remember I told you earlier that I want y'all to listen because I'm going to tell y'all something at the end. Okay, what now this is the end, what I'm going to tell you. I'm finna start an another. I'm finna. I'm finna put, start another YouTube channel, and uh, it's gonna be in the YouTube's channel. It's gonna be. It's gonna be. It's me, cartoon from five three, but it's gonna be called uh, Tales from the Set. What it is, you know, you got a lot of people with different YouTube channels. Some people doing reactions. Some people doing sports stuff. Some people doing all type of stuff. But now me, I'm. It's gonna be. My, I'm finna have another station. It's gonna be like an audio book. You know what I'm saying? So I let you know now that on that station, I'll tell stories because a lot of people want to hear the stories going to work. A lot of people want to hear my stories that's going to get them through their work day or just get them through whatever they're going through. A lot, I get a lot of that comments in my comments. People like to hear my stories at work and other little things. Okay. People always talk about, man, write a book, write a book, write a book. True enough. But I know I'm good at telling stories. Even when I was in prison, when I used to be in lockup, homies would, you know, uh, give me, you know, Get me on the get me on the door to tell stories over the tear at night. They, you know, give me um, candy bars and chips and all that. You know, cool because I know I've always had that knack. Um, the audio with me telling a story on like an audio book, it's gonna be good. Now, I let you know now that no the the names that are used in it they're not real. The scenarios that I use in it are not real. It's totally fiction. It's total fiction. Fiction is made up, make believe, not true. Fantasy, whatever you want to call it, not real. The stories will be fiction, but it will be it will be stories that have that I have devised for you, my listeners, to listen to. You know, th to get you through your work day, or you know, have you something to just check out, just like audiobook. It's just like you picked up a book and start reading it, but instead of reading it, the book is speaking to you, and that will be me, the the village storyteller. I will be speaking the story to you, but I let you know now. So we'll be made to you. Yes, I get. They're all made up. Nothing is real. Nothing is real. So I, what I do, I need from y'all. I need your input. I need everybody in my comments. First off, hit that like button too. But I need everybody in the comments to tell me if they think that's something that that they can rock with. If they think that's something that they can get into. If it's something that you like. If you like it, that story, and you want more. You know what I'm saying? Because the stories will range from A to Z, all type of stuff. I'll, I'll cover all type of things with my stories. So look, Foundation, and people who are not a part of the Foundation, who just low ride and listen to my stories, I'd like for y'all to get in the comments after you hit the like button and tell me, yeah, Tune, that was cool. Do that, do that, do that. And I'll know which direction to go from there. So in the meantime, in between time, <laughs> y'all rock with your big partner, man. It's me, Cartoon One, the Village Storyteller. I'm out. Peace.